Hey guys, welcome back to the next video in the series and today we're talking about depth passes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up the depth pass real fast so you can know how to do it. And then after that, I'll show you some of the advantages and challenges you might face doing it with other passes like the mist pass. So in case you missed it in the previous video and inside of Blender, this is a little bit different than Redshift and Cinema 4D, but the principles stay the same, is we're going to use the Z pass, but I also exported the mist pass so you can kind of see some of the things that might happen if you try to use this pass. So in After Effects, we've already set up our extractor and OpenIO color conversion for our base. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. We're gonna call this depth. And in extractor, instead of combined, I'm gonna set this over to our depth. As you can see, Open Color IO is expanding our depth a little bit on this. We're getting more information. And so since we have the depth, I'm gonna add an adjustment layer. And I'm gonna show you two ways to do this. One is with probably the better looking depth of field, which is FL depth of field or Fruchlos depth of field. We're gonna start with this one, and then I'll also show you how to use the native camera lens blur if you do not have this plugin. So first, let's start with Fruchlos. So the first thing we need to do is set our depth layer, which is on depth. And I'm gonna increase the radius some more, and you notice that nothing is happening. It's because this is set to source. If you want that to work, you need to pre-compose this and then select it as the depth layer. Otherwise, if we set this to effects and masks and reset our position, we're gonna to start to get some nice smooth depth of field. Now I'm cranking up the depth of field so you can see some of the issues and how you might wanna fix some of it. So you'll notice that the first thing is we're getting some crazy fringing on the sides here. And for some reason, I always feel like when I come back over to depth buffer and I select invert, and then let's reselect what we wanna be in focus it always seems to clean up that fringing. Some of the reason for that is Frischleft actually likes the white to black depth passes, and that might have something to do with it, but uh, this one way to fix if you have some of those issues. And this is cranked up too high just as an example, but it's something to think about if you're having some issues. What I also like to do is I like to select the iris, and if we want more of an anamorphic kind of bokeh, I'm just gonna increase these facets a little bit. I'm gonna go this XY aspect ratio, I'm gonna kind of get that nice tall bokeh that we get from nice anamorphic lenses. Now, in this 3D render, we don't have a lot of hot spots that'll really attribute to this, but I just sort of like how it looks. So to get your depth of field up and running from Blender and After Effects, that's kind of all you need to know in your set. Let's go over to Camera Lens Blur. Properties are basically gonna be the same. Let's blur this way out. Let's select our depth of field. Instead of source, we're doing effects and masks. And we don't have a focus distance picker. So in this instance, we're going to have to kind of dial it in. All right, so right there is looking pretty good. And if we over blur that, and kind of like with the other one, if we over blur this a little bit too much, we're gonna have a little bit of fringing on the side, but you probably wouldn't want that much depth of field anyways. Something that like that looks nice. And that is one way to get up and running with the camera lens blur effect. Now that's kind of the baseline of how to get depth of field up and running. I'm going to talk about some other things that you might run into if you're not using a depth pass like this. So we're getting more into technical stuff if you want to stick around. And one of the things I'm going to talk about is the depth pass versus the mist path. So here's the depth pass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to label this mist. I'll come up to extractor and I'm going to switch this over to the mist layer. Now, the colors are a little different, but you can technically get depth of field from this. Let me show you what happens when you do. I'm gonna relabel this layer to depth of field using depth, and this is going to be depth of field using mist. So let me turn on the background. We'll go back to Frischluff so you can kind of see the errors that happen, and we're going to get it from mist. Now, let me select the center again, and what you're going to notice are these nasty artifacts that you can get on the edges if you use a mist pass. Let me take a screenshot of that. This is mist and this is depth. Let's focus in right here so you can see this. Mist pass, see these edges and all this aliasing and issues? Depth pass. Mist path, depth path. Mist path, okay, you get it. And just if you ever run into this with your compositor renders, let me explain to you what's happening. A mist pass, you can see how smooth it is, has anti-aliasing on it, whereas a depth pass has no aliasing. 
And in this case, the Zephyr Field plugins love passes that are not anti-alias, so jaggedy. And it's just able to read this information better versus the miss pass that is more smooth. It causes artifacts and those issues that you see in depth of field. The same thing will also happen with the camera lens blur plugin from After Effects. You're going to have issues using the mist path versus depth. So again, just for fun, and here is depth using camera lens blur. So it's still over blurred, but still fixing some of those issues. And if you're using a different program or if you're finding issues with your depth of field, the first thing you wanna look at is, you wanna make sure your depth is not anti-alias. You want footage that is not anti-alias and it normally comes out anti-alias. So, all right guys, in the next video, we're gonna keep doing our test renders. And the next thing I like to do is the crypto mat. And I like to set up crypto mats with the minimal amount of layers possible because I don't like having a bunch of layers. I have to have a bunch of track mats. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about how to set up crypto mats and how I like to set those up and composite those inside of After Effects.